This episode is brought to you by Starpilt Pro. Starpilt Pro is your new online portal for professional discounts and preferred pricing on wholesale waxing supplies. Stay tuned for an exclusive invite to Starpill Pro at the end of the show. Welcome back. We are on episode five of Pink Table Talk. My name is Jolly. And my name is Nicole. I'm the community manager. And I am the social media manager. And we are here at Starpill Wax US. And today we are going to teach you how to become an esthetician. It's winter months and slow season is approaching people are trying to stay warm so maybe client books are not as packed so it is the perfect opportunity to take advantage and follow your dream of becoming an esthetician now's the time there's no better time than right now so we're going to get into it on how to become an esthetician on if this is the right path for you and what steps you need to take to successfully become a licensed esthetician So there are over 60,000 licensed estheticians in the U.S. alone, and almost 90% of those estheticians are women. So major cities like New York, Atlanta, Los Angeles, Scottsdale, all have a high demand for estheticians, especially waxing specialists. Estheticians can thrive in many different cities because there is always a demand for skincare, hair care, and beauty in the u.s yep i mean it's never gonna go out of style it's never gonna go out of demand and right now since we're mentioning you know we're in the winter months Mm -hmm. if you start now and you're able to take a course that is falling ending or falling into the summer months you're gonna be all set ready to go next year and ready to go with full client books for the summer because especially in the summer like these places in la um new york city you know the summer is really when people are getting waxed and they are outside and they are in the beach in the you know in the water and um it's really a uh an up season for estheticians so good timing yeah definitely so what is an esthetician nicole explain it to the people if you don't know exactly what an esthetician does so by definition an esthetician is someone who specializes in the beautification of the skin so what does that mean Estheticians can perform um, different beauty practices, um, body treatments, skin treatments, such as facials, superficial chemical peels, body treatments, like I said before, and waxing, waxing of all kinds, whether it be on the face, on the body, anything like that. So if you have a passion for skincare, waxing, or both, then becoming an esthetician can be the right path for you. So how exactly do you become an esthetician? Um, you know, there, there's a, I don't want to say a misconception, but sometimes uh, you'll see courses available online or you'll see like a fast track to a waxing certification. Mm-hmm. And um, the truth is you have to be licensed. You have to be licensed yeah. in your state. It is illegal. Ooh. It is illegal. I got nervous. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it is illegal to practice waxing, especially for, you know, payment on clients. Yes. Um, if you are not licensed in your state. So to become an esthetician, you have to go through a school course, a um, a full term course to become licensed. So this just depends on where you are. Programs are different lengths. And for example, let's Let's put it in perspective for people who are not in the U.S. Like in Puerto Rico, you exit for an example, which actually is technically the U.S. It's a certification. It's a certification that you still go through a course in, but it's not a license. In Canada, it's the same thing. In the U.K., it's the same thing. So in different places in the world, it's going to be a little bit different. But for the sake of what we're you know discussing today, we're talking about the U.S. So state by state, you'll have a little bit of a difference, but um, you have to still have your state license. Uh, So you just want to start by searching off places that are local to you, right? Look for cosmetology schools, skincare schools, um, something that has a specific aesthetics or skincare program. That's what typically they're called. Yes. And (laughs) just so everyone is clear, a... In the U.S., a waxing certificate or a certificate of any kind is not the same thing as being a licensed esthetician. Correct. 
put some respect on licensed estheticians' yes. names. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, once you've searched up your schools and you kind of know what your options are, check out their term hours or semesters when the next semester starts. And just really check out if it's going to be, like, in person, Monday through Friday, Monday through Thursday, 9 to 2, 9 to 4, whatever the case is. And make sure that it works for your schedule and it's something that's doable. Exactly. And apart from just, you know, researching schools and looking at the hours, you also want to get information about the cost of tuition, of course, because it does cost to go and get licensed as an esthetician. And tuition can vary from state to state, from school to school. It really just depends on the school that, you know, you're researching and your state. But um, a lot of schools offer grants and scholarships, which is amazing because it does um, become costly to, you know, go to school and you can apply for those financial aids if you don't plan on playing up front and, you know, compare the semester hours and time frames with the tuition costs, the financing programs, take everything into account when, you know, choosing a school and making the decision to go to school to get licensed. The prices or, you know, just investing into it's just an investment, you know, yeah. at the end of the day, you're investing invest into yourself. Exactly. Into yeah. your career. If it's something that you're passionate about and you think it's the right choice for you to make. Exactly. Don't be intimidated by the price tag on it. There's always, always options. Schools always provide some sort of plan or financial aid. Like Nicole is saying, you can even get free money. OK, girl. Exactly. Get yeah. those scholarships, get those grants. And, yeah. um, you know, so. I like that you mentioned, you know, really get a feel for the school. Definitely. That's something that I think is really important. Um, you know, even if you're able to take tours of the different campuses and kind of compare yeah. how they feel. And even like asking really detailed questions about the programs and how everything is going to go, like how everything is laid out, just so you have a holistic view of what your, you know, experience will be like at that school, what the teachers are like what you'll be learning, how the program is structured, all of that. A hundred percent. And this is kind of like an insider tip. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of just like an extra tip, right? A big pointer, like a big, mm, I don't know, red flags are like super popular on these memes. These yeah. Red flags and green <laughs> flags. But a major pointer of um, just the quality and just maybe what your experience might be, might be. Don't hold me against it, allegedly. <laughs> Don't hold me against what I'm saying. Um, are the products that they're using. So making sure that the stations look proper if you're taking a tour of the school. Making sure that everything looks sanitary with the skincare and the waxing products. Um, and just kind of really paying attention. It's kind of like when you go to a waxing salon and you're choosing a wax, right. an esthetician or a wax center. Right. Or a doctor's office or anything that where you're going to be serviced at. the same thing. They're servicing you with your education. Uh, just scoping it out and making sure everything looks up to standards, up yeah, to par. Yeah. And literally could be like up to state standards. Yeah. So that, and that's a good tip. I feel like people don't think about that, but that's definitely something to watch out for when, you know, researching schools. Yeah. It's okay to be picky with something like this. Yeah. I mean, thing. it's a big investment and you're, you know, like we said, investing in yourself and your education and your career. You want to make sure you... You know, pick the right school, the right teachers, all of that, all of that. Like job. when you go to college, yeah. I mean, it's like college. Literally, I mean, yeah, you, it's literally college, like college. Yeah. Typically, if you're in high school or whatever, they mm -hmm. will set up tour days and you'll go around the state and visit different, you know, campuses. And you're like, oh, I like this campus. Oh, I like this campus. Oh, you know, same thing. Yeah, it's the exact same thing. Just get a feel for it. OK, so. What is it like once you are in school, once you've applied, you're accepted, and your program starts on a Monday at 9 a.m.? <laughs> um, so school goes a little bit like this. You are going to have your theory lectures. Mm -hmm. You're going to have your times where your professor is taking you through the textbook, the curriculum, the PowerPoints, showing you graphs, uh, teaching you about the skin, the you know the actual dermatology portion of it, mm -hmm. teaching you about the waxing, teaching you about the... Uh, chemical science behind everything within the aesthetics program. And then, of course, you're going to have your clinical hours. Yes, where you get hands-on experience with your fellow classmates, your teachers, models, all that jazz. And yeah. I feel like that is one of the best parts of esthetician school because, Very you fun. know, you actually get to start practicing your techniques, what you've been learning yeah. in theory. Very fun. 
Uh, you even get clients, you know, there's real clients that come to these schools and, uh, there is a student menu and obviously these clients know that these services are provided by students. So don't feel bad if you rip someone's eyebrow. Off. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, be very careful, but yeah, it's really fun. It's hands on. Yeah. You get to, you know, practice everything. Like you said, you're just learning. Yeah, it's, exactly. Um, uh, it's exciting. Yeah. yeah. And typically it's towards the end of the program. So after you gain all of this knowledge and after you're learning everything, it's so fresh in your mind. Typically you'll finish off with completing your clinical hours. If not, you're doing them simultaneously, but, um, it's a really cool way to finish off your, uh, your, Aesthetic your school experience, yeah, your yeah. course and kind of really get prepped for your hands on in the real world in what your career is about to take off in. Yeah. And just apart from, you know, the actual clinical hours being super rewarding, just, you know, the final exams, graduation, like if you really apply yourself, you are going to excel, especially if you're, you know, passionate about aesthetics and you are pursuing this as a, you know, real true career. You want to build, you know, either your own aesthetics business, whatever the case may be, you can even after graduation and I feel like this is what most SDs do. They typically will start after, you know, graduating, start at an established practice, whether that be, you know, a chain. Like an independent SD who yeah. has their own, yeah. Exactly. The team and business. Exactly. Yeah. That has been established just so, you know, you get your feet wet, know how it's like servicing clients in the real world, out of school, and using that time to really orient yourself how it how it is being an esthetician you know in real life and getting that practice and then eventually opening up your own practice yeah a hundred percent and you know giving the benefit of the doubt to schools and curriculums because sometimes curriculums can be outdated and it's not just with aesthetics it's with all curriculum um some you're not going to learn everything that there is to know especially if you're going to become a wax specialist specific uh, in specific excuse me obviously we're star po wax and we yeah. we this is our this is what we focus on this is our forte um but you're not going to learn everything there is to know about waxing specifically in school and that could be because of many different reasons it could be because new techniques have arrived mm -hmm. arrived mm -hmm. um it could be because you're practicing only with a couple of types of hard wax or mm -hmm. maybe just soft wax or just soft wax. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you don't even have like a roll. You know, it's yeah, there's there's a, a bunch of different factors that go into play after you're graduating from school. And depending on even what program you enroll in. I mean, we've mentioned this in previous episodes, even in our, our soft wax versus hard wax episode. Mm -hmm. A lot of traditional schools used to only use soft wax mm -hmm. and maybe you'll go to a school that only uses soft wax, but you want to use hard wax and you weren't exposed to that in school. In the real world, when you, you know, start practicing with actual clients is when you get that exposure to, you know, the new things that you didn't exactly. see in school. Exactly. That's why I liked how you mentioned you know, going into establishment straight out gets you it gets you a it gives you a real feel. I mean, it really gets you in tune with the 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 trade, with the industry. Um, you'll learn so much being under someone who has been doing it's like mentorship is super important. Yeah. Um being able to get those services in a fast pace, being very efficient with your time, it'll help to create an environment where you're able to see um enough clients in a day, right? To make a good living and to just really have your efficiency like on top of your game exactly yeah. um the the other the other aspects too of this business i mean really like the finances the investments yeah. the profits the profit margins mm -hmm. everything um, you have to invest in to even you know open up your own business and start your own business whether it be just waxing or whether you're going to open up like a full practice of skincare and waxing like a lot of it goes into it and Working with someone that has been through that before, like working at an established, you know, independent wax studio, mm -hmm. having that mentorship from the person that did all of that would be super beneficial just because you have, you know, someone showing you the ropes, sharing with you what they did to get started, et cetera. Yeah. So. A hundred percent. Yeah. Retailing having, products. Yeah. I mean, retailing products, upselling 
all that stuff it's just extra you know it's extra stuff that comes with the territory especially if you are looking to go solo and be an independent um if you're not that's okay too yeah we support all the essays yeah um we love to to stand behind our solo estheticians but i mean there's so many different paths you can take but all of those different aspects come into play and ultimately just feeling super fluent in what your passion is and knowing that you're like really a boss um makes all the difference for sure for sure um so that's pretty much right i think we covered it i mean yeah i think we covered from a to z on what an esthetician is how to become one what school is gonna kind of be like what you should do after graduation correct yeah Yeah. so recap search if you're looking to become an esthetician today right now search in your local you know go on google whatever you use to search (laughs) And uh, search local cosmetology or skincare schools. Make sure that they have a, an aesthetics specific program. Yes. This is also called full specialist in some places, skincare uh, specialist. And make sure that they have, you know, the track with waxing in it, of course, as well. Mm-hmm. This is how you become a licensed waxing esthetician. Mm-hmm. Uh, and make sure that waxing, what did I just say? I don't know. Uh. We'll, move on. we'll move on. Um. Yeah. So once you found your school, kind of compare and contrast, right? Mm-hmm. Make sure that you have mm-hmm. time to maybe visit these schools. Do your due diligence, research the programs, mm-hmm. and then once you're in it, just go all in. Yes, go all in. Take it all in. Enjoy the experience, whether it be theory, a hands-on learning, like the whole thing. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be a time. Mm-hmm um you know graduate that's super fun super rewarding yes having your license sent to you by your state print it (laughs) frame it uh worship it um it was probably you know your hard work blood sweat and tears that got you there for sure and uh yeah go into it with you know fearlessly like nicole mentioned have someone mentor you have someone mentor you and uh get your get your get grounded in it and you're on your way yeah and of course, and we'll be there to help you along the way. <laughs> there you go. You <laughs> read my mind. And of course, call Starpill if you have any questions. Um, you know, we have a we have a team of estheticians actually who do support our our customers, our potential customers, anybody who we service. I mean, we service everyone. Mm-hmm. If you are thinking about even becoming an esthetician, we service you as well. We have some answers for you. We have some information yes. for you. We have resources as well. Yes. So do not hesitate to reach out if you are at all interested. And, you know, going to get licensed, opening up your own solo SD practice. We have resources to help you out as well. One huge thing, um, and this will be my last point, but one huge thing is the way we help these estheticians go solo and be and have their independent business businesses is the programs that we have at Starpill. Definitely. Um, Like, for example, if you have a PAM, if you have a personal account manager, Mm -hmm. They're going to be somebody who is really going to put you on to um, how to make your profit margin the largest, you know. So making sure that you're investing in something that's smart for your business, the products, but the amount of product. Um, you know, if you are just starting out, you're not going to be ordering 100 pounds of wax every exactly. two weeks or, or a month, yeah. you know, every two months. So making sure somebody's on your side to make sure your growth um, is timely. Having someone know the bit help you with the business exactly with the business side of it and you know stocking wax and all of that with the how yali was saying with the profit margins and and all of that so we we got you boo don't worry um if you have questions we're here and like yali said we have a team of licensed estheticians that have gone through what have you gone what you will go through if you decide to you know participate in aesthetics program and get your license so good luck to you yes go on go forth be fearless have fun with it and um congratulations if you're taking that step on becoming a licensed esthetician yes early congrats to you for more information on how to become an esthetician read our waxapolitan blog how to become an esthetician in 2021 and to discover why star pill is america's favorite wax brand Head to the link in the description box and use code PINKTALK at checkout for 15% off your order at starpillwax.com. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Pink Table Talk. 
Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel, especially if you're an esthetician or waxing specialist. Follow us at Star Pill Wax USA on Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest. This episode was brought to you by Star Pill Pro. Also Wax Reimagined. The Starpool Pro Portal is a new online portal where you can manage your bulk orders with the ease of just a few clicks. No more time-consuming phone calls or email threads. Supply your business in your style with Starpool Pro. The link to apply for your account is in the description box below. We'll see you right here on the next episode of Pink Table Talk. Thank you. Peace.